Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday at 11 o'clock. I think I've chosen the wrong time. If you're hearing that beeping noise, that's basically the um, recycling guy backing up into our cul-de-sac to pick up our recycling. Um, it was a hard night last night. I I'm going to be honest with you. We did a lot yesterday, and I was hurting and tired, physically exhausted um, by the time 10 p.m. rolled around. Jerry went to bed. I stayed outside to play on my computer, play my game. Um, and I went to bed at, I crawled into bed at midnight, but I didn't fall asleep until almost three o'clock in the morning because this would not shut down because it was excited. It was like, yay, we're almost done with the living room. The only thing we have to do to be totally and utterly finished in the living room is to deal with the decor. And I was happy because I got the one computer, uh, the one TV uh, stand and whatnot from the living room moved out of the way and the TV stand from the living room, or from our room, moved into the living room. The reason why we did that is one, it has a, a better shape and footprint to fit where we wanted to fit. And um, we wanted to move stuff around anyhow. And the way things were set up in the bedroom for us to watch TV in the bedroom, the TV was too low and we had it placed on a platform on another platform that was just a little unstable. And I got it moved, everything moved and situated into the living room and went, cool, everything works. Um, at first, I thought that the TV stand from the bedroom wasn't going to work because it was a little wibble wobbly. It wasn't flat. And I partially think because the area in that corner by the fireplace is not level. It's kind of cockeyed. Um, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it better. Excuse me. My nose has been... Ever since I ripped up the carpeting in the bedroom, my nose has been a little overactive. And I know why. And I'll tell you why here in a second. I'm sorry. The, um, our bedroom has not been maintained well enough. A lot of dust, and I mean on every surface, a lot of dust. Um, the wall behind the TV, both in the living room and in the bedroom, had, um, dust bunnies and, and wall cleaning dust and that kind of stuff. So I've been kicking up a lot of dust and debris and whatnot, and it's finally gotten into my sinuses, causing postnatal drip and a cough. And I'm like, I better not be getting sick because I cannot afford to get sick for a number of different reasons. One, there's too much stuff to be done around here. And two, if I get sick, who's going to take care of, of everybody in the house? Who's going to take care of, help Jerry Ann with her problems, help me with my sinus problems? Um... No spray and pseudephedrine have become my best friend right now. Um, for the most part, when I first wake up is, in the, is the worst because I sleep on my side. So that means either one side or both sides eventually get clogged. So when I first wake up, it's everything's trying to drain, whether it's trying to drain down the back of my throat. And that's why I drink coffee to help keep, to help melt and get rid of the stuff in the back of my throat. Um, that's why I use no spray and pseudoephedrine to help that out. Um, <coughs> so I'm like, yay, I got the creeping cruds. But like I said, we've got the living room at 99.9% .9 finished. Um, I can't wait until it's done done so we can take, you know, a video of what the room looks like now. Um, then the question is, where do we go next? Do we come in here and try to straighten some of the stuff at, out in here because there's one or two pieces in here that are going out and there's at least one piece coming in? Um, we talked about this last night and the idea was to take all the bags of growth of, of giveaway stuff all the stuff that's in this corner that's supposed to be given away throw it in the back of the minivan 
whether it's uh, temporarily there until we have a yard sale or until we decide to just take it to the um, thrift store, the Goodwill store up, up the road from us. Um, Salvation Army, basically. Um, and then we're going to clean out this area that's basically in front of the H cabinet. So we can get the into the H cabinet and start pulling stuff out of there to put in, into this, the Filipino dresser, um, and then move the H hutch out of this room. So basically what needs to be done before we can start on the next project is a combination of <clears throat> cleaning out, cleaning the entranceway, getting all that stuff dealt with. It's been sitting there for too long. Um, Getting, getting the stuff out from in front of the H cabinet to uh, get into the H cabinet so we can move that and move the two display cases with the crystal and china and get all that stuff out of there so we can move them out of the way. Get the H cabinet out of this room. I might clear that door, but I don't know. I might have to lean it a little bit and move it to a, a someplace out of the way. Go into our, to our room, clean off my dresser, cleaning all the stuff on top of my, uh, in the dresser out. The dresser is going to come in here and the two side cabinets are probably going to go on top of that. And then the H cabinet is going into our, our room after we rip up the carpet. So I'm at that point where I can either go in there and rip up the corner of the carpeting where the um, TV hutch was. So we have that cleared out so we can move some stuff on top of that onto the subflooring for temporary temporarily and then just start moving furniture around and ripping up carpet and all that fun stuff so we're at that pinnacle where it's like okay well, do we go deal with this do we deal with this do we start that where, where do we go next um all i know is if my information is correct, um, we will probably have one or more sets of visitors in um, in July. So I need to get as much of the bedrooms done um, by July, which means basically every day that we're going to do work, we're going to be working on household projects. And Jerry said that's fine because she can use the footage for her YouTube, which basically said that Thursday and Friday we would be working on YouTube stuff. Um, I did get a request from a viewer to do more cooking. Um, I'm going to do a cooking video tonight. I'm going to try to do a cooking video tonight, um, Tuesday night. And it's going to be a simple just what to do with leftover type cooking um, video. So, hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, that will be up, hopefully, by this weekend. Um, my videos have been kind of like a day or two late because I got thrown off my game over the weekend because just sun, uh, uh, Saturday morning I did a video. I don't remember when it got up. Probably didn't get out until Monday because Sunday when I would have put it up, I was just not in the right frame. My mind was just like, I was not in a good place mentally. Um, physically, it didn't help either because I was hurting because Saturday we did, we did some big stuff. But I'll have to pat myself on the back for it because the fact that I, um, I didn't think I'd be able to do it physically because my body was just, I mean, my body was just like, wait a minute, we haven't done anything heavy duty in, in almost a month and you all of a sudden want to start lifting heavy stuff. Um, so yeah. Um, but let's get into, all right, let's get into what I wanted to get on this video for. I, I wanted to do a quick, I wanted to do a quick update to let you know what was going on. <laughs> Um, but I mainly wanted to get on here to talk to you guys about, um, the American Cozy that I've been reading. Excuse me, I'm going to be drinking my protein shake in the morning here because one, it helps my sinuses and two, 
these apple cinnamon um, protein shakes, and I'll get you a little bit closer so you can see it. It's got oats in it, and it's great. Not, not only does it give me morning protein and um, energy, but I, oh man, this is like these are better than the, the banana and cream ones that I was drinking before. And I can't down it all at once because I just don't have that capacity. Um, but anyhow, this section I'm about ready to get to you, uh, um, read to you guys is the last part of um, Clutter. What was the title of this chapter? I forgot already. Yeah, Cleaning Out the Clutter. And the next one is chapter four, which is Warmth is all around you. Anyhow, um, this section is basically, the last part of this section is called How to Resist the Pool of Stuff. Anybody remember George Carlin? Why is it your stuff is junk and somebody else's stuff is stuff? Um, I, we, me and Jerry used to go back and forth with that because it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, I have stuff. You have junk. No, no, no. I have stuff. You have junk. And, you know, it's like, okay, my junk or my stuff is junk to her and her stuff is junk to me. Where can we meet in the middle and try to combine and be happy? Um, which we're learning how to do. Anyhow, it says, uh, most of us love to acquire new things. Guilty. Um, so especially if it's something that really catches my attention or my it appeals to my sense of who I am. Anyhow, uh, but if you are trying to live a calm, centered life in a warm environment, inviting, excuse me, warm, inviting, cozy home, which is what Hagi is all about, or Hugi, Huga, depending on where you're from and how you want to pronounce it, it's important to resist the pull of more things. As one of my Danish friends says, the more things the more things you crowd into your life, the less life you have room for. Interesting. I've never thought of it. Um, fortunately, there are ways to shortcut that inborn urge to stockpile more stuff. Here are some of the unique tools. Now, before I get into the tools, I have to say this much because um, I'll tell you what. Most of my life, growing up, there's a lot of things I wanted. And I still had plenty of life. Because, one, I didn't always get what I wanted or, or anything like that. Because, mostly because of finances. Two, um, there's a lot of things out there that before I started getting into being... Before I got married and before... Um, before I got into a lot of things I'm now into, um, mostly money, and two, you couldn't find it here in Rolla. And I didn't know I didn't know anything about Amazon or ordering stuff off the internet or anything like that. Um, so I had to be content and happy with what I had. Um, now, this was back in the 80s and 90s. And back then, I had to either replay the same old video games over and over again. And, you know, the good thing about it was I knew the shortcuts and how to get around certain obstacles. Um, I read. I tried to collect uh, whatever few things I could find. Um, I was content. Wasn't exactly 100% happy because I knew there was a lot of stuff out there not to accumulate, but to do that. I just didn't get, I didn't get the chance to do or didn't take the time to do because I had plenty of time to do it. I just didn't do it for whatever reason. Um, I actually decided one year, mid to late eighties, um, to go get a job in Yellowstone National Park. Cause when I found out about it, by looking at job sites on the web and found coolworks.com and heard about, oh yeah, you can work a season in the na in national parks. Ooh, 
Ooh, Yellowstone National Park. I, you know, I didn't know nothing about Yellowstone National Park, but something, something guided me to go to Yellowstone. So I did. And that's why I started accumulating, like, um, memorabilia from Yellowstone National Park, Yellowstone National Park, cup, a coffee cup, or, um, water bottle, uh, and little things like that. Things that I knew I can take with me on travels. Anyhow, the first thing she says here is, have a goal you are working toward. Spending money on an experience and education or paying off debts is a wonderful way to honor yourself. Next time you find something pinning for pining, excuse me, for a new sofa or shoes, ask yourself if they were if they will feel as good as repaying your student loan or surprising your parents with a family trip to Jamaica as a gift to yourself, reply reply the price of the resisted item towards your goal. Apply, not reply, excuse me, apply. So basically what she's saying is basically what would be what would feel better? Spending the money on a new experience, education, or, you know, paying off student, you know, debts of one form or another. Or buying a house, or not a house, a couch, or a trip, or, pay, you know, spend, using that money towards something that you really don't, it's, you know, what's more important, basically, is what she's trying to say. Um, wait a month. Jan and I have learned that basically, um, I'm not even going to read that because it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, eh, maybe I'll read it. Yeah, I'll read it. Heck with it. Whatever it is you want to bring home from a pair of pumps to a new duvet, give yourself a month to think about it. If you still want the item after a month, then go for it. Like I was about to say, um, Jay and I have learned something about spending money and um, wants. Okay. The idea of waiting a month, some people can't wait that long. Some people are like me, just a little too like anxious and worried that, well, if I wait a month, is it going to still be there? Well, here's the thing. Jay Ann is more adept at this than I am. Um... You see something on Amazon.com or you see something on Pinterest that has a link that takes you to Amazon. Or, you know, you just happen to see something in your local, um, um, a display window at a shop. Like, let's say you live close to a local mall and you happen to be taking a walk through the mall for exercise and see something and go, ooh, that looks nice. Or, in my case, ooh. Could I use that? Is it, you know, would it work with my decor? Would it work with, you know, is it something I really want, basically? Or, unfortunately with me, because I get them all the time, ads for new um, video games. And I'm still a kid at heart, and I like playing video games. I don't care. Um, it's It relaxes me. It takes my attention and stress away. Um... We both have gotten to the point where we say, we don't have the money right now. And when we do have the money, if God wants us to have it, it will be available to us. Or it's something like a new bed. We needed a new bed. So it was like, okay, do we have the money? Let's wait a little bit. We waited a little bit and we got an alert to the factor that the item that we wanted, the bed we wanted, was the price went down. There was a reduction in price. And that's when we went, God's telling us to get it because we have the money and the price went down. So it's not going to cost us as much or take us as long to pay off. So we did it. Ugh, excuse me. It is sometimes better to wait to see one, if you still want it in a, a, a month. Two, is it still going to be available? And three, can you afford it when it does become available in a month? And maybe you get an alert saying, hey, this item you put on your wish list went down in cost. 
that's when you have to go, do I still really want it? Don't wait a month. Just ask yourself, okay, cost went down. They're telling me it's, you know, a couple dollars cheaper, 10, 15, 20 dollars cheaper, depending on the item. Um, do I still really want it? Do I still need it? And that's the thing is you have to decide the difference between need and want. We needed a new bed. It wasn't a want, it was a need. So we waited to see if the price went down, and it did. Um, let's see here. The next one. Nothing new comes in before two old things go out. That's a good one to have. I, I wish I wish I knew about this a long time ago. Basically, she's saying, in, I'll read it. In our house, whenever we bring a new item in, be it a shirt, a coffee mug, two things must leave. This makes you us think about how much we want something before we commit to owning it. There we go. That's a good one. Um, I, I I wish I wish I could implement that in this house because there are times where um we buy stuff without even thinking about do we have the room? Do we have the space? What can we get rid of before we bring it into the house? Now I do that every every year or every season when I go to change out clothes. I look at all my clothes and go, how much of this did I wear? Which items did I wear the most? Which ones were worn the least? I look at the ones that I wore the least and go, hmm, do I still need it? Do I still have room for it? Do I, will I ever wear it? And then I decide what I want to get rid of. Jared does not do that as often as you will notice if I were to. Basically, those are all bags of clothing. 90% of it, Jerry's, that she finally decided to downsize. Um, she's downsizing for two different reasons. One, we're running out of space. Two, we're downsizing our furniture, which means we have to downsize our clothing because we won't have enough room in the dresses that's going to fit in our new um, rearranged room. That, in fact, was just time to date. Basically, go through it and go, okay, this is out of style. This doesn't fit me. I've, I'm, I haven't worn it yet. The tag is still on it. How long? You know, that kind of thing. Um, next one. Ignore sales, coupons, promo codes, and the like. Sales and other markdown benefits the companies you buy from. All they really do for you is allow you to add more clutter to your life for less money. Not buying something will always be the most cost-effective and clutter-busting choice, promo code or not. Yes, me and Jerry are guilty of buying stuff that we really don't have room for. It's one of the reasons why we are now going literally room by room, rearranging, decluttering, and cleaning. Now, the biggest room that we're going to have issues with and we're going to have to bring mom into is the kitchen. We have so many different combined kitchen gadgets, tools, pots and pans, and so on and so on, that not only did we have to install three over-the-counter cabinets, but three on the floor cabinets for all the different stuff that we have combined. A lot of it is mom's baking, baking, um, uten baking good, uh, pots and pans and, de and decorating kits. And how much of it do we really use and how much do we really need? Mom has two or three, no, two drawers. Uh, is it two or three? I don't know. She's got a couple of drawers of stuff that how often do we dig into it? How often do we use it? Um, we've got extra tongs. We've got extra ladles. We've got a whole bunch of extra different pieces of equipment or utensils or whatnot. That's kind of like, let's go through this room drawer by drawer, cabinet by cabinet and see how much we can downsize. So we're going to be doing that here hopefully before the end of the year. I want to get the everything done 
before the end of the year. I'd like to be able to get it done before August because that uh, July, August is when I might have to go back to work. So if we don't get it done before then, I don't know when it's going to get done or how we're going to get it done. And depending, because Jerry was talking about, I might only need a part-time job because we're doing fairly good with YouTube. So be it. I kind of rather work a part-time job so I have more time at home to deal with the house. The last one she has on here, I think that's the one. Yeah, last one on here. Um, do not read catalogs or sales circulars. Oof. That would be considered in my book, Junk Mail. And we already read the part where she suggested that you don't even bring the junk mail in the house. You just put it directly in the garbage or recycling. I have two recycling bins, one for uh, paper goods, cardboard, um, that kind of thing. And then I have another one that's for aluminum cans and glass bottles and plastic bottles. Um, the glass bottles would like be my mead. Plastic bottles would be mom's Coke. And aluminum would be basically when I have soda. Um, let's see here. Basically, let's see here. Um, let me just read that. The more you look at things you do not have, the more you will want them. Remove temptation and you'll be less likely to find yourself purchasing items you do not need and less likely to hear your partner or kids asking for things they don't need. What is in your space as well as what is not in your space affects your mood and influences how you feel about your home. The simple act of tidying up play, plays a huge role in creating an atmosphere of comfort and warmth. This is the gift of Hagi. Enjoy it. So yeah, removing the temptation of looking at a catalog we get catalogs here because we used to order from LTC Commodities and all those different catalogs that had just decor items, random items. Uh, we used to get um, Montgomery Ward catalogs that had a little bit of everything in it. Um, Mom still gets catalogs. I don't even know why. Um, she has, she barely buy, buys anything. Um, most of what she's been buying lately is like paint by number art so she can have like the canvas art that are paint by number and the various types of color pens and whatever to, to, to work on those. And then for the most part, she's given away a couple of those paintings. Um, one or two to Carla. Um, she sends one or two away to, to friends and family members. It keeps her occupied, and the thing the thing that I'm thankful about is most of them either go out to friends and family as gifts, or she's hung one or two of them up, you know. And personally, I don't know if some of it's keeping up with the Joneses because of Jane's got her gallery of wall. And she's starting to hang stuff on the opposite in the opposite side of that wall in her hallway. I I I I do not try to stop or influence my mom. The only thing I try to do with my mom is influence her to keep clean, keep her areas clean, help clean the house. Um, for the most part, I don't really demand anything from anybody because it's like, and maybe this is my problem. I'm the type of person who I have a hard time asking people to do stuff. Because the way my mentality is and kind of kind of the way my dad raised me was um, if you can do it yourself and you want it done a certain way, do it yourself. If you can't do it yourself and then you ask somebody else to do it, don't get mad about how they did it because they did it their way. So it's kind of like one of those things where it's like if you don't like the way people are doing it, do it yourself. Um... There's a lot of different things my my upbringing kind of taught me that I look back at it and go, kind of backwards. I mean, I understand the whole, if you don't like the way somebody else is doing it, do it yourself. But you can't get mad at them 
for doing it the way they want to do it when you ask them to do it. And that's the, that's when, sometimes when Jenny Ann and I get into a headbutting con contest because she's going to ask me to do something and automatically I'm going to start doing it my way. And when she starts getting uppity or upset or whatever, because back I'm not fulfilling her vision of, of how to do it and what it's supposed to, you know, what it's supposed to look like at the end. Um, I get mad and, and kind of go, well, if you didn't like the way I was doing it, you should have done it yourself. Because I can't do it your way because I'm not you. So, yeah. It, it's one of those kind of like give and take. You have to, to be willing to either take their best effort in doing it or, or do it yourself. Um, it's one of the reasons why at first I had a whole, I, I mean, for the first five years of our marriage, I had a lot of difficulties when she asked me to do something and then get all mad because it wasn't done. Either A, it wasn't done her way or B, it didn't turn out the way she envisioned it. And I tried to explain to her, look, I can't do it your way because I don't see things your way. I, I can't see what's in your head of what you want done and how you want it done. I can only sit there and go, okay, Jerry wanted me to do this project. I'm going to try to do my best. So it took us some uh, some time to, to understand each other's mentality on projects. And it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, okay, you want me to do a project. Are you going to sit there and be the foreman? Or are you just going to let me do it to the best of my ability, my way? Because... <laughs> mustache hair um because each in individ each individual person has their own style or their own way of seeing things or their own way of doing things and it's kind of hard to ask a person to do something and then get upset because of the fact that they didn't do it your way or the vision you had in your head did not turn out the way the end result was so that's one of the reasons why Jayanna has learned that if there's a project that I'm going to tackle, um, there's two things to do. One, do you need help? No. Okay. Don't continuously ask that just, that's frustrating. And two, if the individual has the, the paperwork to build a cabinet or, or know what they're doing because they've been doing it for a very long time it's best to just basically step back and either wait for the person to ask for help or when you see the person getting frustrated, maybe politely go, can I help you? Is there something I can possibly do to help you out? You know, don't sound like you're going to take over the project or you're putting out that vibe that the person who's doing the project doesn't know what they're doing and you're, you're coming in to to fix the problem or, or take over the project and be a foreman or whatnot. Um, I'll vouch for a lot of men because I know a lot of guys, especially in my family, um, that basically if they're going to go out and do a project because it has to be done or it needs to be done or they've been asked to do it, um, we don't like being told what to do. Because if we can, if we can approach a project and look at it and go, oh, yeah, I, I see how I can do this. Don't come in behind them and start going, oh, well, you did it wrong or you did this or blah, blah, blah. You know, don't be negative about it because nine times out of ten, most of the guys in my family will turn around and go, well, you fix it. You complete it. You should have done it yourself. I, I don't know if that's just my family's mentality or or or. The fact are most of, not just the men, I know plenty of, uh, of of women in my family, especially my dad's side of the family, who are like, get out of my way, I'm going to do this myself. Um, it's just because the fact are most of us are do-it-ourselves uh, do -ourself type people. Um, yeah, not unfortunately. Um, there are a lot of people who, who need help or want help. Mm, or like my wife, and I love my wife dearly. She wants to help because one, she wants to feel like she's part of the part of the process, and two, she wants to feel needed and 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 feel like she can be some 
of some help. So it's kind of like one of those, I don't really need help, hon, thank you very much. Or I might be like, yeah, can you hand me such and such a piece or that screwdriver or hold, come over here and hold this piece so I can lock it into place. But for the most part, I try to do most of the projects by myself. Um, that's just me. But um, when it comes to like what I just read in American Cozy, um, avoiding temptation and then how, how to avoid buying stuff just for the sake of buying it or uh, falling into that trap of, oh, look, I've been wanting that for quite some time and it's now four four ninety nine or fifty percent off or whatnot and I'll be like oh it's cheaper I can get it now I have to learn Jerry is learning we both are learning um that sometimes it's best to look at it and go that's nice but right now one can we afford it and two where are we gonna put it in the house and what are we gonna what are we replacing it with um All these clothes. One of the biggest reasons why all these clothes are no longer part of our, our part of Jerry Ann's wardrobe is one, we don't need them. Two, she's got plenty of other stuff. Three, they don't fit her or they're out of style. Or four, they're just taking up needed space that when was the last time I wore it? When was the last time they were used? You know, she's. She's got enough, we, we kept enough dress clothes, winter clothes, summer clothes, various types of clothing to basically have one or two of, of each or we kept enough that it's not like we're wearing the same clothes over and over again when it comes to certain kinds of clothes. She has at least three or four pairs of, of suit, pan, um, suit pants or women's dress clothes or dresses and sun dress, you know, instead of having, you know, 16 sundresses and a variety of colors, she kept her favorite colors, her favorite style, you know, reduced it down to like half a dozen, you know, because I, I basically explained to her, I don't understand having so many clothing items that you have literally a month's worth of clothing before you even think about running out and washing clothes. I have a week's, a little over a week's worth of, you know, eight to 10 days worth of clothing of various varieties and styles that I like before I have to worry about laundry. You know, I used to live, granted, for the most part, it was like either all different types of wool shirts or maybe a couple wool shirts, a couple uh, Native American type shirts, and a couple other just, you know, average everyday t-shirts that I liked. Um, I have more clothing than I've ever had in my life. I can remember. But that's because of the fact that I've, I had, a, I, I knew what I liked. And my, no, man, okay. I knew what I liked and I had a variety of stuff. I had what I liked. Jerry was the one who introduced me into different types of clothing and different types of styles of fashion instead of just drab, everyday, boring looking clothing with maybe a handful, you know, three or four different type of, of fancy dress clothing for church or, or special events. And I was like, before I met her, it was like blue jeans and t-shirts. That's all I wanted to wear, blue jeans and t-shirts. Now I have a little bit of a variety of everything. But anyhow, try to avoid bringing in magazines, junk mail, flyers, coupons, promos, any, anything that basically is not important. Basically the things that you should be bringing in the house, or at least the things that we bring in our house is bills, credit card statements, letters from friends and family, friend mail, or packages of what we purchased the weekly or weekend flyers with all the different ads for all the different stores and, and, and places you can go to buy whatever. 
I throw them directly in the recycling bin. Um, anything that has a promo code or does not look like something extremely important, straight to the straight to the recycling bin. Anything in an envelope, if you cannot identify what's in the envelope and it looks important, open it up. Just come inside, put put stuff down on the counter or wherever you can by the entrance way or by your recycling bin. Open it up. If it looks important, take it and, and read it and deal with it. If it looks like a gimmick or you've been pre-approved for a credit card, rip that sucker up and throw it in the recycling bin. It, it's gimmicks to try to get your hard-earned money into their company so they can do whatever they want. The last promo that I got for you, you're instantly approved for a $1,500 credit card. I looked at the back and I saw that it was a very high interest rate. It was extremely high for an instant interest rate. I shredded that sucker up and threw it in the garbage. Actually, I gave it to mom and said, mom, can you shred this? Because I don't like... I don't like throwing certain kinds of mail directly into the garbage. My mom has a shredder to shred credit card, you know, credit card documents or offers or anything that basically is old or is just like, it's junk. It's junk, but it has pertinent information. Um, there are people out there who can take just your name and your address in there in the, the credit card offer and get it under your name and falsify documentations and ruin your credit score. I use Shredder to deal with that stuff. So it's just don't, if it has anything in there that is not important, like I said, credit card information, flyer, you know, promos, flyers, ads, anything that could possibly tempt you to, um, buy stuff that you don't need or or it's not a necessity, throw it away. Um, yes, yeah, some of you are might be going, well what 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 would I consider? What what would Jim Henson consider as a necessity? Your bills, your statements for your credit cards, your statements for your um, utility bills Anything that gives you information on what money you are spending, that's that's important mail. Because then you can use that piece of information to budget or balance your, your credit cards or checkbooks or your monthly, weekly budgets for your food costs, your utility costs, your cost of living, basically. Those are important. Um... Letters from family, Christmas cards, card, birthday cards, anniversary cards. So, yeah, they're nice to have. You can take them, bring them to your in, read it, look at it, write a thank you note or send a thank you post or whatever. Um, my my wife before I came into her life literally had Christmas cards from nineteen eighty one or nineteen eighties, like literally twenty years before before we met or fifteen years before we met. And I was like, why do you keep all these Christmas cards? Why do you keep all these birthday cards? Why do you keep all these cards in general? And she goes, for memory. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but this is clutter. This is, you're keeping stuff just for the sake of keeping. You're bored, and I literally said, you're borderline hoarding because you're keeping things just for the sake of keeping things. And she starts, she started throwing things away or she was like, well, then you deal with it. Like, well, I can't, I don't want to deal with your past because that's your past. I don't want to, you know, get in the middle of that. But just think about it. How important is it to keep a birthday card or graduation card, not graduation card, um, first communion card? Now, I can understand keeping the um, communion card because it, it's an earmark. It's a special occasion. But to keep Christmas cards for, for years gone past, um, even though it's only like a handful of them. Okay. Your milestone your milestone birthday cards. She got a couple of them for her 50th birthday and I said, you can either keep these or you can... Basically, what a lot of people are doing nowadays because of the digital era, take a picture. Take a snapshot, put it on the cloud, put it on your computer. 
but don't keep the actual card that's going to cause clutter with paper. Um, I sometimes look at some of the catalogs just out of boredom. Nine times out of ten, I'm like, nothing, nothing worth, nothing worth even looking at again. Um, Jerry doesn't look at them no more because she's she falls into temptation quicker than I do. Um, because I've got that mindset of like, if it's not useful and it's going to cause clutter, why even why even why even buy it? Um, very few things actually make me go, ooh, I want that. Um, thankfully I don't get some of the catalogs that I used to get when I was single. Um, one of them was Scottish Lion and it had like tartans and swords and anything and everything Scottish that could be either decor, food, or clothing. Um, and then I got another one and I can't remember the name of it, but it was, it wasn't Cabela's. Oh, U.S. Calvary. U.S. Calvary is a clothing company, or is a, is a catalog that has anything and everything to do with camping, hiking, survival, um, emergency equipment. Um, you can buy K, um, the, the rations, the MRE rations, um, water purifying tablets, and all kinds of stuff for surviving anything and everything from a nuclear holocaust to... A tornado, you know, a tornado ripping through your neighborhood and causing your house to be tore up. Bug out bags, um, all kinds of stuff. I don't get those no more because I would look at those and go, "Ooh, yeah, me want, me want, me want, me want." Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that was like sending me, like sending a child into a candy store saying, "You can look, but you can't have nothing." That's just that's just cruel. Um, so yeah, I know I understand the the hazards of being tempted by things that you want. Um, why allow temptation to creep into your life when it's not necessary? Besides that, if there's something out there that you need, um, that's a different thing. But you have to learn to separate your need from your want. Um, that will be a big helpful boost in fighting temptation of just buying for the sake of buying. Um, anyhow, um, that is today's video. I know it's another long one. Most of my videos are, but sorry. Sorry, not sorry kind of situation. Anyhow, um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them in the question comment box. Um, yeah, if you're, if, if you're new to my, um, channel and you decide that you want to subscribe, you go ahead and hit that subscription button. And once you do that, a little bell will pop up. You click on that bell and YouTube will let you know when I put in my uh, next video. So until next time, enjoy. God bless. Have a good day. Bye.